seats out of the first floor for the wheelchairs, the first floor was almost always full. So now I know I'm going to have to climb the chairs. What's the solution to that? If you ever gone, you've got a wheelchair area, sometimes they put a label along some other seats. What? Well, okay, yeah, so one thing, I can, I can make the chairs flip down. Anybody see seats reserved for, yeah, elderly, pregnant, right? Kind of like, dude, if you can walk, walk up the steps. <laughs> but here are some of the seats to try to reserve some things to say, you know what, we want to. So sometimes as a designer, I've got something, but can I go back and say, is, is this going to create any kind of other issue? Uh, I, with that. And sometimes it, I, I mentioned it at the end of the last lecture about universal design principles, about is this kind of thing accessible for, for all people? Um, are, are we going to limit it? If somebody's colorblind, are they going to be able to use this? If somebody's visually impaired, if somebody it is hard of hearing, And I'll tell you, when I was your age, I had no glasses. I used to make fun of people with glasses. I have bifocals. Bifocal contacts, one of the weirdest kind of concepts, but, and I have hearing aids. And as I've gotten through, I've realized a lot of the barriers that we have. But as a designer, sometimes I can make something more inclusive with an early design change. But these are things that you want to think. It's one of the powers of the kinds of project partners we have is we put you in situations where you're thinking of these things or with people who these things are important to. And this is the kind of thing that you can carry on to your career in, in whatever company. So if I look at things and to say um, there, there's different kinds of local... Um, Accessibility things, when we're looking for universal, this is just an example about, you know, like, um, can I walk? Or um, we mentioned with the elderly, can I climb stairs? Is there a barrier here? What are some of the things that we need to think about? And there's actually a, um, there's some toolkits where you can actually look at your design as far as how inclusive it is. There are also things, you know, when we're doing these, and, and one of the things that, that I get frustrated with is what we call political correctness, is people trying to figure out, oh, I got to figure out what's the right thing to say so I don't get in trouble. But sometimes even the language we're using of, of our designers and I'm going to use the example of people with disabilities. And I, I say that because about a third of our projects, our, our partners are either people with disabilities or deal with those. One of the, the concepts there is a people first language. When you're looking at somebody as somebody with a disability, you look at them as a person. Any of our designs, Actually, when you look at life, I, I personally believe a lot of the problems we get in the world and in life is we're not looking at everyone else as a person. We don't look at people in another country, in another culture as actually a person. You look at somebody that may have less as not a full person. And so in the... In, working in the area of access and abilities is one of the things which is a language piece, but it's also a mindset is, can I think of them as a person? So instead of saying someone like a, a handicapped person, and by the way, in, the, in that area, the term handicapped can, is, can be offensive, but I look at it as a person with a disability. Somebody's not, ah, here's a, a, an autistic person. It's a person with autism. It's, it's a person with a, does that make sense? 
And so I say this is not a political correctness thing, but it's really, can I think about something? Here's a difference. Somebody who uses a wheelchair versus somebody who's confined to a wheelchair. Person's not confined to a wheelchair, but do they have a wheelchair? Do they use a wheelchair? There are a lot of things that we do and, and it's um, where we dehumanize other people. And some of it is just, it's easier to not um, think about that. But if I'm looking at, at phrases in here, it's a person, um, these are affirmative fr phrases, right? Person with an intellectual, cognitive, developmental disability versus um, retarded, mentally defective, person who is blind or person who is, who is visually impaired as opposed to a blind person. Um, I was walking in an apartment building and I hit past this door and it had handicapped on the door. I wanted to go to the management and said, this is one of the stupidest signs. The apartment's not handicapped. <laughs> it's an accessible apartment, right? I pull into a parking space every time I go through. I get mad. It's like, that parking space is not handicapped. It's an accessible spot for people with disabilities. Remember when I showed you that Camp Riley auditorium that was totally accessible? It's the kind of things to say, oh, well, we need to find a place for someone with a disability. So we will let them sit over there. Aren't we great? <laughs> Instead of going, you know what, there's people and why can't they sit anywhere? So we're building a new auditorium. Huh, we'll just make all the seats flip down. Okay. And this translates to other people. What when you're doing global projects, if you're working with whoever you're working with. I found it fascinating, this is a number of years ago, our Habitat for Humanity team built a model sustainable house. And I noticed a change in the way the team talked when they met the homeowner, the future homeowner, partially because she was their age very close, and she had just an adorable little son. Because that house went from the house, to it went to Sarah's house. Now I got a, a person, now we're working with a person, it humanized the whole project. And if you can do that, that helps. One of the things that you look at, and, and I'll give an extreme an example on the other side, is when countries go to war, I was reading this, psychologically, the governments put out, I'm going to say propaganda, news, I guess the term now is fake news, about how horrible the other side is to dehumanize them. As designers, the things that you're doing, you want to humanize your design and understand um, the, the people with that. Um, and I'll close with just some characteristics of some good designers and then some things about some beginning designers to avoid. Characteristics of good designers, tolerate, tolerate ambiguity, uncertainty, like, oh, we don't have all the answers. That's wonderful. I'm uncomfortable. Okay, as a designer, we're going to, to do that. To be able to see the big picture and also see how things um, are going to fit with the design. Some of the things to avoid. Design arrogance. I see this. We know better. If the user, if you as a user were just smarter, you would understand our brilliance. Or we know better. Or, yeah, we interacted with the user and they wanted this, but we're not going to change. Because we are smarter. We are Purdue students. Um, design shutdown. Oh, I got an idea. We have our idea. I don't want to get any other feedback. 
Our idea is perfect. I've stopped getting input. The other thing is, hard word to say, routinization. It's a routine. It's a magic, we're going to go through the steps. I do A, B, C, <gasps> I got my grade. I have my notebook, look, I reflect it every week. Can we be done? You all are working on real projects for real people. It is different than almost any other class. It's not just trying to get a grade, we're trying to get something done. Good designers make decisions. So earlier I said we handle uncertainty. We get to a point, we got to make a decision. I want to get as much information as we can. We're going to make a decision. We're going to talk it over with our advisors. We think as part of a team. There's a social aspect. I love to see teams that do team building and, and mix. And this weird thing, think and communicate in several different languages of design. We're talking amongst our team, we're talking with the users, we're doing other things, we're interacting with prototypes. I'm not just asking you, you're going to touch it, you're going to feel it. Those are some of the kinds of things that we talk about. Design can be a lot of fun. I will, I'm telling you, this semester, can be a significant semester in your development as a person, as a future professional. If you really dive in, it can also be a critical semester in the development of the projects that you're doing that can improve the world in some maybe small but measurable way. And I think that that's really um, cool. Okay. All right, you've got your attendance sheets. The question for these is, were you here? So you want to say yes or true. And if you would put them up next to the hand sanitizer on the table, that would be wonderful.